Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. This video is intended for adults only, 18 years of age and older. So if you have children, please take them out of the room. Today's subject was an overwhelming amount on the vote section on my community page about the Holy Spirit. So let's begin and then I'll talk. Isaiah 31, Spirit is... Ruach, in, that's in Hebrew, and it is used in the sense of invisible force, of power. Thus, Ruach, depending on the context, used to express intelligence, will, truth, hope, faith, knowledge, wisdom, discernment, omnipotence, omnipresence, infinity, invisibility, holiness. These words are different in reference to God's soul. Leviticus 26, 11. Ruach covers mind power. It is entirely possible for a person to go through his entire life as a pawn of Satan and never know it. Matthew 16, 21, 23, like Peter, we could be motivated to believe or dis disbelieve something, accept or reject something, say something or keep silent. The soul is invisible, super being such as God. In John 6, 63, Jesus says, He is the Spirit which gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The word that I, Jesus, speak to you are spirit. Just because one is close to Christ does not eliminate the prospect that a demon will communi communicate communicate with and through the person. As seen in Matthew 16, 23, Peter did the speaking, but Jesus spoke directly to Satan, naming him as the source of Peter's outburst against God's will, the Holy Spirit, that Jesus should suffer and die. Without Peter recognizing it, Peter permitted himself to be a conduit for Satan's will. The disciples' good intentions was against God's will, and Jesus thus judged it to be evil. The Holy Spirit is the power of God. God sends his spirit forth, and creation takes place. This is important. Please pay attention to this. The Holy Spirit is the power of God. God sends his spirit forth and creation takes place. If whatever he sends his spirit into has already been created, then the transformation takes place. From what to what? Transformation takes place from a state of destruction to a state of purity, clean, cleanness, construction, and order, from confusion to order. This is what happens in, happened in Genesis 1. What is the Holy Spirit? It is the essence of God's mind. It is that simple. It is the essence of the mind of the Father and the Son. Jesus said, The Father and I are one because their minds are so much alike. The Holy Spirit is power that issues from them, and we accept it or not. What does it issue us? What is the fruit? Love joy, peace, patience, kindness, meekness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The Holy Spirit emanates directly from them for the express purpose of influencing influencing us directly and personally, which is why we can be called the called the chosen, the elect. 
for all people in this world, God closed, chose directly to influence us, an individual. In Ephesians 2.2 2 says that Satan indirectly affects everyone on earth with his spirit. God's spirit does not go to everyone. It came directly to us. He, God, sends his spirit purposely. He is thinking about us individually, the chosen, the called, the elect, and he is determining what we become or became, where we can fit in his kingdom and what he needs to do to prepare us for it. He was thinking about us before he never let us know. And when the time came that it was right, he sends forth his spirit and began to create us spiritually. He sent forth its mind and began to interfere with us interpersonally. Such is the difference between God's approach and Satan's approach. Once we understand this, we can begin to understand the errors in Trinity doctrine. Holy Spirit is the power of God. Hallelujah. So brothers and sisters, I tell you, I am learning Oh my goodness, and I may lose people on this channel, but I don't want to be popular. I want to please the Father and save souls. Brothers and sisters, listen carefully, please. And I say this humbly, okay? Jesus brought me up here on this mountain, pulled me away from my children, friends, everybody. I'm all alone on this mountain with my dogs G and G with Jesus and my dogs and just me. That's it. That's it. Um, I say this because I see now he took me and he is using me. And every day, every day, every day I get closer to him. And I say that humbly, but I allowed this. I'm six months behind on my rent and I laugh and I put it in God's hands and I don't stress no more. I used to think, 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 what am I going to do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. My kids don't talk to me. What am I going to do to get them back? What am I going to do for this? What am I going to do for that? I don't have a truck. I don't have a vehicle. How am I going to live? How am I no, it's all gone. I gave it up all to the spirit. And now I live joyous and peacefully and, and come from a place of love. Brothers and sisters, all the people that have chosen to take a podium and speak of God must, must reflect on God's will. Now, I say this because there are many teaching once saved, always saved, which is true. Okay, now let's stop there. It's true. However, they're teaching that before they teach what I just read from the King James Version, Hebrew Version, from God himself. First, they must teach and should teach about the Holy Spirit. Then... Of course, you are once saved, always saved, and never out of his hand. But like I just said, Satan can use, and I didn't say it, I take that back. Like the father just said, Satan can use an individual as a pawn your whole life and the individual not know it. Like Peter, what he did and said about Jesus that was from the evil one that jumped inside of him, a demon. Now, brothers and sisters, what I'm trying to say here is this. Many are saying, oh, you could be a homosexual. You could masturbate. You could do this. You could do that. And then ask for forgiveness and you're fine. Brothers and sisters, once you are saved and the Holy Spirit takes you over, I'll read it again. And his determining what 
we become, where we can fit in in his kingdom and what he needs to do to prepare us for it. He was thinking about us before he never let us know. And when the time came that it was right, he sends forth his spirit and began to create us spiritually. He sent forth his mind and began to interface with us personally. Such is the difference difference between God's approach and Satan approach. Okay. And again, Jesus said the father and I are one because their minds are so much alike. The Holy Spirit is power that issues from them and we accept it. What does it mean to issue us? What is the fruit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, meekness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The Holy Spirit, Spirit emanates directly from them for the express pur purpose of influencing influencing us directly and personally, which is why we can be called the called, the chosen, the elect for all people in the world. God chose directly to influence us, one person, individually. In Ephesians 2.2 2 says that Satan indirectly affects everyone on earth with his spirit. God's spirit does not go to everyone. It came directly to us. He, God, sends his spirit purposely. He is thinking about us individually. Now, again, the reason I say this about the once saved, always saved, yes, that is true. When you are saved and the Holy Spirit dwells in you, you die and you become anew. Meaning, the Holy Spirit is the power of God. God sends his spirit forth and creation takes place. If whatever he sends in spirit into his already has been created, then transformation takes place. For what? To what transformation takes place from a state of destruction, meaning all filthiness, all evil, all uncleanliness. People say it's okay to masturbate. When you masturbate, God's watching. There's no corner of the room or world that you could go in and hide. When you masturbate, what are you doing? You're thinking lustful thoughts, something to turn you on, right? That's why I said children must be out of the room. We're talking frankly here. God wants me to. God sends his spirit forth and creation takes place. If whatever he sends his spirit into has already been created, meaning the unsaved, then transformation takes place. From what to what? transformation takes place from a state of destruction to a state of purity, cleanness, construction, and order from confusion to order. This is what happened in Genesis 1. What is the Holy Spirit? It is the essence of God's mind. It's that simple. It is the essence of the mind of the Father and the Son. In other words, in Romans, in Leviticus, in all of these, it says that the unclean will not inherit the kingdom of God. Homosexuality, um, fornication, drunkenness, all of these things are not of God's mind. So if it says right here that God sends his spirit forth, that means that you are new and you will not and will not and will not do those things. You do not want to do those things. You can't do those things because you know, you know the difference from God's mind and what Satan is trying to trick you. So if you are saved and born again and have the Holy Spirit inside of you, you already know Satan's tricks. And when you get that urge inside of you, well, let me go be a be do this homosexual act let me go fornicate let me go get drunk let me steal this let me do this then the holy spirit leaves you 
and then a demon has entered you. And you must be careful because at that moment, think about it, what if at that moment Father God comes down to rapture his children, okay? And you're in the act of drunkenness, in fornication, in homosexuality. So to say once saved, always saved is, is correct, but you're teaching it backwards. You must first teach what the Holy Spirit is and what it expects of the individual it's dwelling in. And then, and only then, you are once saved, always saved, because you know what God wants you to think. You're thinking just like him. So if God's commandments are to love, not to hate, not to steal, to honor thy mother and thy father, no, not do homosexuality, he calls it an abomination, not to fornicate, not to be a drunkard, not to be a, a gluttonous, not to all of those things, not to divide brethren, not to gossip, then you are truly saved and you are always saved and he does not let you out of his hand. And you are thinking like God and Jesus, his son. That is what the Holy Spirit is. So pastors, preachers, and people out there with a podium, before you teach once saved, always saved, you must first teach what the Holy Spirit is. It's the power of God. And once you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, you have to know when you are in the world, it just said how Satan is in the world with all the people and makes his spirit indirectly affect all of us. When you are saved and you have the spirit dwelling inside of you, you should have the mind of God and the son, Jesus Christ, to know the difference. Oh, this is a trick. Oh, I don't do that. Oh, never should I do this. And then and only then will you inherit the kingdom. Of heaven. I'm sorry if this offends anybody, but God is very, 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 very specific of what he wants his children that he has chosen to dwell inside of them, to act like, to speak like, and to do. Now, like Peter, it happens, but make sure that you Basically, that's free will. Make sure that you are, that's why your walk should be so close and so tight. And you have to be aware of all the spiritual warfares and arrows coming at you. And you know what God's mind, you have God's mind and Jesus's mind. You know not to fornicate, not to go out and drink. Don't go to that bar. Don't hang around with the people that you're not equally yoked with because they want to pull you down. Then the spirit will come out of you and the demon will jump in you and you will become, again, non-transformed, crooked, um, doing ungodly things. And you have to be careful that at that moment, the father does not come down and you are in sin. Because it is impossible to please God and to go with him to his kingdom if you are unclean. And that sums it up all, brothers and sisters. I am not speaking from Lisa. I am speaking from the Holy Spirit and from what God says. He is very specific in what he wants and what the Holy Spirit is. That is him dwelling in you. So if he dwells in you and to him fornication, being a thief, being a liar, being a homosexual is an abomination to him. How can he dwell in you? He cannot. He has to leave. And then the demon jumps in. It's black and white. That's it. There's no in between. There's no gray area with God and his son, Jesus Christ. So get it right, brothers and sisters, before, before he comes back. I'm telling you, that's why he doesn't just not put this in the word just to put it there and it's taken away. Wide the gate to hell and narrow the gate to heaven because 
When you truly are saved and you have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, you are transformed. Transformation takes place from what to what? Transformation takes place from a state of destruction to a state of purity, cleanness, construction and order from confusion to order this is what happens in genesis 1 what is the holy spirit it is the essence of god's mind it is that simple i love you all it's all from the word the king james version and the king james commentary he sends me brothers and sisters i sit here for hours i take notes and i read and i speak to him and he tells me what to write and i write it all down with my hand i do and i'm humble to say this but he's using me as a vessel i was once in the world but no more He's taken me out of it. He's put, in, put me up on this mountain. He told me to come on and make this platform. And I'm speaking for him, through him. And I know it sounds harsh. I was there. I was a sinner. I did filthy things. But I can no longer do it because the, the spirit convicts me. I know the trick from Satan. The minute I sit here and start to think, what if I get evicted? What if this? What if that? The spirit, that's not of the spirit. Oh, no. Tunnel vision, tunnel vision. Me and Jesus, me and Jesus. I do not do not allow, I do not allow, I do not allow anything to come in between me and Jesus. No, no, no. All those arrows that Satan wants to throw at me, I rebuke every second I breathe, every second. No, no, no. Tunnel vision, me and Jesus, me and Jesus, me and Jesus, me and Jesus. My mind, Philippians Philippians uh, 4, everything pure. I only keep my mind and eyes above, above, above. I do not let Satan or his demons whisper in my ear. No, no, no. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, God's mind, God's mind. No, no masturbation, no lust, no fornication, no homosexuality. No, no, no. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. That's it. That's it. That's it. I love you all. God willing, this little Italian girl will be back. Ciao.